Morning guys, this is Tung Snow class week 9b of the Corona Apocalypse. <clears throat> um, next week is stripe test and then the week after that is graduation. So we're going to finish today the rest of the forms, the rest of the self-defense's techniques reviewing from this cycle. When I did Monday's video, I said if you had stuff you wanted to review to let me know. Um, one person got back to me with a couple of requests, so those will be added in. When I do my video Monday, Monday again is a review. Um, if there's anything that you want to see that you have questions about, let me know and I'll try to add it into Monday's, into Monday's video. So we're going to start off with a warm up running in place. And then we're going to do 30 seconds of upper body, like you would do as bad work if you were taking candidate class or getting ready for your black belt test. So you have lots of upper body techniques. Think about using them all. And next, jump rope. And then legs, 30 seconds of legs, kicks and knees. If you have a heavy bed, um, I'd like you to do, I'm only going to do one set of these on the video. It seems kind of silly for you to sit here and watch me do six minutes of warm-ups. But I'd like you to run through this at least one more time. If you have a bag, use the bag. If you have somebody in your house who's willing to hold mitts for you, or even just offer you hands as targets, do it that way. You do lose some not having anything to hit, but I don't have anything to hit, so that's just how it goes. Jumping jacks. We're going to do 15 seconds like this, and then we're going to switch to the cross jacks. Better I'll be able to do these by the time we get back to live classes. And 30 seconds of everything. Okay, do it again. Then we're going to stretch. Reach up, hands to the ceiling. Reach out and give me some arm circles. Other direction. And over and under. Okay, pull one across. Then push it back. You're gonna bring it here. And try to put your hand between your shoulder blades. Then bring it the other way and bring it up. If you can, get it back between your shoulder blades. Pull the other one across. I showed you that one because my right one's not nearly as flexible. Push it back and push it up. Can't even get the elbow on that side. Okay, put your hands behind you, clasp them together, push your chest forward, and then lift your arms. Reach for the floor.
Okay, side stretch. One side. Yeah, I don't think you can see me. One side. Other side. Back to the first side. Back to the second side. Feet out. Down to the center. Toes up, chin up. Forearms are on the floor. Feet in closer. Reach out as far as you can. And up. Okay, so we're gonna do it like we did on Monday. From each curriculum, we're gonna do a form. We're gonna do a self-defense. We're gonna do a technique. I just threw a couple of extra forms in there today as review. So from the begin from the white belt curriculum, again, we start with basic form one. I start up here, so I'm not stepping off the rug. Well, I'm off the rug anyway. Okay, then from the white belt curriculum, handshake self-defenses. We have two. Somebody, these are someone who's being a nudge, really, not someone who's threatening your life. We're gonna assume that someone who is shaking your hand is probably not threatening your life, but it's a handshake. First one, you make a, you pull the guy off balance a little bit, make a peace sign, put it over their wrist, not mine, but their wrist. Thumb goes on theirs, squish down, peel. If you need violence after that, but hopefully somebody who's shaking your hand too much, you don't need violence for. So again, shake hand, peace sign, over it, take the thumb, squeeze it down. The other one, this web here between your hands, find this side, there's a bone there. And what you're trying to do is drive that knuckle up under the bone. So somebody shakes your hand, you grab your own thumb, you take this knuckle and you grind it up so it's not just against this, but you want to get up and under it. So shake hands, pull, grab your own thumb, grind. Technique from the beginner curriculum. Uh, back fist punch. So we're going to start here. We're going to start in our fighting stance. We're going to do back fist reverse punch five times. Two, three, four, five. Jump and switch dance. One, two, three, four, five. 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 Okay, also from the white belt curriculum, basic form two. You guys should have these burn into your muscles by now. We've been working on these for four months, if you're a white belt, or three. I'm guessing four months because most of you guys would still be doing videos if you hadn't started before the shutdown. Okay, single wrist. Uh, this is a low block self-defense. If your kids are in the AK program, you've seen this before. Somebody grabs your wrist. I want to get away. If I take the opposite leg and step away, my hand hasn't traveled back any. But if they grab this hand and I step back with the same foot, right there, my hand is pulled back. So either they let go or I've broken their balance and brought their face here close to me like this. So they grab, step back with the same leg, bring your hand up, and you do a low block. And what you're doing is you're hitting with this meaty part of your hand right into this part of their wrist, the bony part of their wrist. So here, they grab, step back, break, violence. 
One more time. Big grab, step back with the leg on the same side, low block, violence. If when you step back, they let go. Self-defense is over, you don't need to do violence, they let go. And then also from the white belt curriculum is low blocks and high blocks. This is an opportunity to practice your, your horse stance. Um, low blocks and high blocks in front of us, we're assuming that the target is in front of us, so your toes need to be either straight forward or toed in a little bit. So we start here, high, high, low, low. Two, three, four, five, six, get a little lower, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so that is white belt curriculum. If you Monday between Monday's class and today's class, that's all the white belt curriculum, forms, self-defense, techniques. Um, from the beginner curriculum, um, orange belts and blue belts, we start with paying on showdown. Make sure when you do this, you're in a tiny little cat stance. And the hand that's going to be doing the back fist is tucked onto the inside. Make sure here you rotate your hips into the block, rotate them away, rotate them back into the block. Without the hips, you're assuming that your arms are going to be stronger than who's ever attacking you, and they're probably not. And I'm going to go right out of the screen here. Okay, self-defense, lapel grab with a punch. Somebody grabs your collar. That hand is not a threat, the other one is. So they grab, I'm gonna trap it, just so it doesn't come up and do something else. And then as they throw the punch, I'm gonna actually reach across and grab. As they throw the punch, I'm gonna step back, out of the way. So if I'm here, I step back, my head is now traveled away from where I'm attacking you. So I step back, I block, their hand is here, grab here. When I drop my weight, if I'm trapped, if they don't let go, I'm gonna break their fingers. Okay, they're trying to punch you in the head, oh well. Okay, so they grab your lapel, trap here, step back, block, down, and this, this sets you up for the uppercut. You're right there. You probably don't even need any more violence after that, but a little bit more for good measure is not necessarily a bad thing. Trap, step back, block, break, uppercut. Uh, technique, break falls. I didn't put the mat out. This is gonna be ugly. Back break fall. Front break fall. You can do these off your knees if you don't wanna rattle the house. Make sure that your whole forearm is landing together. There. Turn your head. So, front break fall. Back break fall, front break fall. Um, I didn't put the mat out, so that's all I'm gonna do. If you didn't put your mat out either, just do one on each side. And when this is done, put your mat out or go someplace where this is a softer floor. I want 10 front and 10 back. And then also from the beginner curriculum, basic form three. From the beginner self-defense, ground defense, the one from the guard where they're kneeling between your legs. If you know the one with the arm bar or you have somebody that you can practice with, do that one. If you don't, 
do this other version that I, that I practiced with you guys. We're here. Let me get farther back that you can see me. They choke, reach under trap, pop the eardrum, rake the eyes. Put this foot over the back, scoot the butt. Put your other foot in their hip. Push against the hip. Up, balance, cover out. Okay, if you have someone to practice with that with even better, um, side kicks, 10 on each side from the beginner curriculum. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. Other side, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so that's all the beginner forms that people are, re re um, are responsible for this cycle. But I'm going to review Chilsung Ilro just because we haven't done it in four months and then I want you to lose it. This, this is actually the last of the beginner forms. There are five beginner forms, three basics, the first king and the first jill sun. Make sure when you get here that both palms are facing the ceiling. And I like basic form three because it's a chill sun. On the first one, hands come to cup and saucer on the back hip. Okay, so we're going to move on to the advanced curriculum, Nianchi Sandan. Um, I've been saying this to you guys since we started Nianchi. Nianchi is all about stance. Um, literal translation is either iron horse or stance of iron. Okay, this is not a stance of iron. This is a stance of iron. So when you do these, your knees need to be bent. If it hurts, do more squats. Put some, a band around your leg above your knees when you do squats. Whatever you need to do, just do wall squats. You need to have this stance when you do Nianchis. So we start off with Nianchi Sanda. Okay, make sure when you do these blocks that your hands are here. So when I do this, my hands are here in front of me. If they're out here, you're not protecting your chest. You've just made a frame for them to hit you in front of. So make sure they're in close enough that you're protecting your chest. Okay, from the advanced curriculum self-defense, someone's coming at you to push or to grab both lapels. I step back, hands come up. I hit my elbows into the soft spot of the inside of my arms. Hands are facing me so that then they can rotate. And you're doing a palm strike, in and out hard, to the top of the pack, jump, spin, back kick. So they come at you, step back, break. It's not just a push, it's a hit, back kick. Um, if you're practicing that with somebody, make sure you peek on the back kick or you're not sitting in the ER with them while they get their knees checked after you kick their knees. And um, technique from this curriculum. 
spin reverse crescent kick. So we did reverse crescent kicks. I think we did them on Monday. So here I'm going to spin. When I get back to the front, the knee that's kicking comes up. The chamber has to be towards the front of the room. It comes all the way back. One, two, three. I don't know if I can do five without getting dizzy. Four, five, and then other side. That's not the kick, that's just the unwind. One, two, three, four, And then I'm going to request to review some other Nianchi. So we're also going to run through Nianchi Shodan. And make sure when you're doing your nine inches, when you're doing these blocks, you don't want your hand like this. You want a straight line all the way down here. And this should be, you shouldn't have your upper body turned. I'm going to reach out as far as I can and then reach across. But your chest and hips, knees, should all still be facing forward. Okay. From the black belt curriculum, got the same goon. Hopefully, I'll end up with the gun Sangoon and not with Pilsan. I don't think that's right. I think I went wrong someplace. No, I'm, I'm, I think I'm still okay. Make sure here you step back to chingle chassis so that you're in a horse stance. When you do that, I mean a, a chingle chassis, again, when you do that elbow, not in a bow stance. So, one block. One block, one punch. One block, two punches. Okay. Um, ground choke. This one is the one where somebody's sitting on top of you and you're doing the bridge. So they're choking. Your hands come up and you attack their elbows, which is going to bring their face in close to yours. Then you're just going to bring your hand up, come up under their chin, hit their chin. They'll bite their tongue, bite their teeth, come back down and trap and bridge. We practiced this bridge earlier in the cycle. We did it in, on the floor over and over and over. We did it with weights. The reason that we do it is so that you can do the self-defense. Um, I'm going to do this so you can see me, but so I don't roll into a piece of furniture. Okay, so I'm here. So somebody's sitting on top of me, choking me. I reach up, I hit their elbows, I come back up, forearm to the chin, trap again, bridge right over, hit them, kick them, get away. If you have somebody to practice with, that one makes a lot more sense. And then... The black belts have a variation of a tornado kick. Um, they had 
The regular tornado kick is a crescent, spin. This can be a pump or it can be a reverse crescent, another crescent. The black belt variation of this is crescent, pit shocky, jump round. So I don't think I can do the whole thing jumping, but crescent, pit shocky, jump round. Okay, five on each side. Um, again, I told you this on Monday, if there's something that you wanna see that I can't do, go on Seth's blog, Myriad Misadventures. He's got video up of some of the, the karate workouts he's been doing during the lockdown. He does this one much better than I do. And also from the black belt curriculum, row high. We broke this one down the other day, but I wanna run through it one more time because it is a required form for this cycle. Okay, so those are the required forms. I mean, that's the required curriculum. <clears throat> we did a couple of extra forms to review, but that's between what we did on Monday and what we did today. That is everything you're responsible for, for strike test and for graduation. Um, you should know your, your weapons by now. And I said, again, on Monday, I said, if there's anything you want me to review, let me know. I got feedback from one person who asked to see comma form. So, this is if you are AK, or if you're already an AK black belt, you know a much longer version of this. But the Tung Sido students who are not already AK black belts are responsible for the action karate form eight part of this. So last time I tried to do this on video, it did not go well. I think I started out on the wrong foot. So let's give this a shot. So here, step back. I'm gonna come to a, a sidekick chamber. Hands are cup and saucer on the back hip. Foot is flat as if it was on a step in front of me. Step out. No, sorry, see I'm already off here. Come to this <clears throat> side kick. I'm going to land in triple chassis facing that way. So I turned triple chassis facing the front. Cut down, cut down. Index in. I'm going to slowly drop to my knee and push and punch. Stand up. Turn the comma over. Step behind. Cut high. Turn it over again. Cut low, step behind, I'm gonna run right out of the room. Side kick, guard stance. Switch feet. So my right one is facing the back of the room, my left one is closer to the front of the room. Axe kick, drop to the knee and cut. I'm gonna come back up, feet across. Right one's in front, left one's in the back. If you can't unwind, you know you got your feet the wrong way. Cut across, bring them here, step out. Shingle chassis, cut to the back, cut, right foot steps behind, up, down. On this one, you don't have to turn your hand. Up, down, unwind. So again, if your feet can't unwind, you know you stepped with the wrong one. Try it the other way. So I'm gonna show you like I did on Monday. I'm gonna show you the list of the stuff we just practiced so you know what you're supposed to be practicing. If there's other stuff, that you want to see me review on Monday. I, I'm not going to, I'm probably not going to put every single form on video. That wouldn't go over well. But um, if there's something that you specifically want to see, if you have a question about a specific self-defense, a piece of a form, let me know. And I'll make sure that I go over it Monday. Because in class, you could say, you can ask me a question. We can't do it this way. So if you have a question, ask me. And this is the stuff that we went over today. Okay, we good? Have a good weekend and I will talk to you guys later.